Let us pray. We thank the Lord once again, Father, this afternoon. We are grateful, Lord, unto thee for giving us life and faith in Christ Jesus. This afternoon, we are about to hear your word as part of our worship. We pray for your Holy Spirit's ministration, Lord. We pray that you touch hearts, you break chains, set people free, draw people into thy kingdom, and I let your will be done in our lives. Speak through your servant and bless all those who listen to your message. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So, yes, the Lord bless all of us this afternoon. Uh, today we'll be looking at a very important topic. But a, a topic sounds very uh, recent in my ears. The holiness of God. I'm sure, I think, we've looked at this some uh, where, uh, last week, a uh, year. But uh, this is a message that God wants us to look at to, uh, this afternoon. I read uh, a message somewhere where a lady said, Hi, my name is, I won't mention the name, and I've been clean and sober for six months. Can I get an amen? So she was very proud to have lived a clean and sober life, obviously from, you know, uh, drugs, alcohol, partying, and all kinds of things. And he, he posted this, and he said, Hi, my name is da-da-da-da-da, I've been clean and sober for six months. Can I get an amen? So, you know, uh, she was very happy to live a clean life because she did not define what that meant. But uh, the concept of holiness is such uh, a very important thing that once we take our time to understand and, and, and live a holy life, we ourselves will feel proud and will feel you know, happy, will experience the peace of God and this idea of holiness comes from the fact that God is holy and this afternoon we'll be looking at this very thing that the holiness of God God is holy and therefore he calls his people of faith to be holy so as we'll be looking at uh, once you become a child of God then God calls you to be holy so this message is not for the whole world the unbelievers are called to enter the kingdom of God and then uh, God will tell them to separate themselves from all that is not pure and holy. And holy living will set us apart from the many harmful desires and lifestyle choices. Uh, robbing us of peace and quality of life as human beings. I repeat, holy living will set us apart from the many harmful desires. And lifestyle choices robbing us of peace and quality of life. As human being, so this uh, lady that I read her comment was so happy to have lived a clean life and sober life for six months. And when we understand and obey God to live a holy life, uh, we can even have greater testimonies like this. So, as he, uh, the book of Hebrews 12 14 tells us, without holiness, no one can see God, and, and without being born again. Uh, no one went to the kingdom of God. So holiness and be born again sort of they are very important requirements. But our main text today is on the book of uh, 1 Peter, chapter 1, 13, 15. Chapter 1, 13, 15. It calls God's people to be holy because God is holy. I read 1 Peter 1, 3, uh, 13 to 15. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. Verse 14. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. Means when they lived as unbelievers. 15. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. As it is written, be holy because I am holy. Our Father is holy. And I said we should live that life. And... Uh, he quoted this right from the Old Testament, Leviticus 11, the verse uh, 14, 4 and 45. I read Leviticus 11, 44, 45. I am the Lord your God, consecrate yourselves to be holy, because I am holy. 
Do not make yourself unclean by any uh, creature that moves along the ground. I am the Lord who brought you up out of Egypt to be your God. Therefore, be holy because I am holy. So when God took unto himself a people, he gave them that instruction that now you have become my people and I'm a holy God. Therefore, live a holy God. And so that is our focus this afternoon, the holiness of God. And as I said, as we do that, we will uh, uh, save ourselves, ourselves from harmful desires and lifestyle choices, robbing us of peace and quality of lives as human beings. So let's try to understand this concept a bit more. What is holiness? We get our understanding from who God is. His central character as being holy, set apart. When we read at the book of Revelation 4, and any time the Bible talks about or gives a description about what happens in heaven, you will always see those who receive the revelation talking about the holiness of God. Revelation 4, for example, the whole chapter talks about the throne room, some of the things that happen there. The verse 8 says that each of the living four creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night, they never stop saying, Holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and who is and is to come. The holiness of God is what you will see in heaven. And rightly, the book of, of uh, Hebrews 12, verse 14, let's read that text. It also tells us this. We start from the book of Hebrews uh, 14, 12, 14. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy because without holiness, no one will see God. Then he mentioned how we can be holy, some of the things. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. So when there's bitterness in your heart, you, have, you defile yourself and you defile many people. And then you are not holy. 16. See that no one is sexually immoral or is godless like Esau, who for a single meal sold his inheritance, right, as the older son. So he lost the privilege also to see the glory of the Lord. 17. Afterward, as you know, when he wanted to inherit this blessing, he was rejected. Even though he saw the blessings with tears, he could not change what he had done. With that holiness, no one will see the Lord. But there is a slight difference between holiness and righteousness. Slight difference. Righteousness has to do with the cleansing of sin in the New Testament by the blood of Jesus, which is a gift God gives to us. So then you become righteous, you are justified in His presence. And you want to read uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, how Christ became our righteousness. Through Christ, we can become righteous. Then the holiness here means the separation unto the Lord. Now that you have been cleansed from your sin, you have been justified, and God says that now you are precious to me. So set yourself apart and live a very good life, a very holy life, because you are for me. So that's the difference. Righteousness involves forgiveness of sins, cleansing, which is a gift as you put your faith in Christ. You become the righteousness of God and the holiness is the life that you live because you have become clean you have become special unto uh, the Lord holiness uh, is a separation from ungodly things and dedication to godly things so uh, uh, you have become righteous in Christ therefore you separate yourself from ungodly things and you dedicate yourself to Godly thing. So what makes something holy is the fact that that thing has been set apart for God. So anytime we talk about holiness, the reference is always God. He is holy and therefore he calls his people to be holy. But there is a, a dualistic attitude towards holiness. Holiness is a subject that will, will excite the true believer but it also terrifies the sinner. So let's look at this well. That the holiness of God will attract us to himself and at the same time his holiness can drive us from himself 
Let me take it again. The holiness of God attracts us to himself. And the holiness of God can uh, uh, drives us from himself. It fascinates us. And at the same time, it also terrifies us. So, so even this morning when I sent the, the, you know, the details of the, of the sermon, I'm sure someone will read and say, Oh, Bishop, again with holiness. Okay, okay that straight away tells you that you are not standing right with God. But don't run away. And those who are standing right with God, they, they don't look at the text and they say, holiness, wow, amazing. So the subject of holiness, it, it excites us, it fascinates us. That the righteous one, the one standing uh, uh, right with God, and it also terrifies uh, those who are not. So when you're not comfortable with the subject of holiness and righteousness and, and heaven and hell, it means that you must... Uh, ask the Lord to take away your sins. You need the righteousness of Christ. The sin must be taken out. Let's go to Isaiah uh, 6. I think uh, that was our chapter. Uh, I studied last uh, Sunday uh, when Isaiah saw the glory, the glory of the living God. He was invited to come and see the glory of the Lord Almighty. Now that experience terrified him. But the moment his sin was taken away, he was now happy and was relaxed in the presence of the Lord. Isaiah 6, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and, there, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim and each with six wings, just as we read in Revelation. With two wings they covered their faces, with two, they covered their feet, and with two, they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, for the whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with thanks from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away. Your sin are turned for. Then I heard a voice from the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me, send me. Before he was terrified. When the sin was taken away, he was now in conversation with the Lord. The holiness of God can fascinate, can excite us, but it can also terrify. And this explains why sinners or those who, who, who are not right with God are terrified. The moment you start talking about God and holiness. I remember, I think about three years ago, I did visit uh, a woman somewhere. And the moment I entered the house... There was another person there, and the person just started behaving abnormally. And, and I just kept quiet, and I knew that it all had to do with righteousness. So the person just started saying all kinds of things. It will always terrify the sinner. But those who have, been, who have received the righteousness of God, they are so happy. And the angels in heaven, they were singing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. I pray that should be... Uh, your favorite hymns coming uh, at dates that it's all about God. It's all about God. It's all about God. So what should people do? Don't be afraid. Come to God. He will take away all your sins and make you righteous and then he will call you unto holiness. Don't be afraid if you are not comfortable with holiness and righteousness. Come to God. Uh, that is why God sent Christ to die for our sins, so that through that ministry, we shall receive reconciliation and have that fellowship with him once again. So don't be terrified. Uh, you know, a lot of people will say that don't talk about holiness, and if you don't talk about holiness, you won't go to heaven either. So we talk about difficult subjects, and once you accept the subject and repent, then of course uh, you can now enter the kingdom of God and see God seated in his throne. And how awesome and how beautiful uh, he is. The beauty of God. I think we may have to preach on this at some point. Uh, 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 let's touch on some of the benefits of holiness. We've mentioned that 
the holy living will set us apart from the many harmful desires and lifestyle choices that robs does rob us of peace and quality of life as human beings. Let's look at some benefit of holy life. Mm, we talk about the fact that it's to set yourself apart unto the Lord. Let's first touch on the ben personal benefit. Holy living helps you not to contaminate yourself, but even what you eat, what you say, what you think, or what you do. Holy living will help you not to contaminate yourself or defy yourself by what you eat. So Leviticus 11, those that tree of God told his people that I'm holy and you have become my people. Therefore, it's not everything in this world that you can eat. There are certain things they are not holy. And you don't have to eat them. Leviticus, read the whole of chapter 11, the diet trilogy. So there are some meat we eat, there are some meat we don't have to eat. In the New Testament, it is said that Christ blessed all food so we can eat. But uh, that doesn't mean you eat anything that will poison you. Very important. Okay, Christ has blessed everything. But make sure that you don't eat anything that will poison you. And so the idea there was the holiness of God being expressed to the people who have been redeemed by God himself. It will help you not to contaminate your, your thinking will become pure. Your desires will become godly. You are careful with what you eat. You are careful with your conversation because you are a holy person. You cannot participate in anything that is uh, ungodly. And so in doing so, you don't contaminate. I think most people are tormented mentally uh, because of what you think and process. And most people have very awkward desires because they've not set themselves apart unto holiness. Second, holy living helps you to live in the power and the love of the Holy Spirit. Right? So if you want power, I'm talking about the power of God, not the power that comes from uh, the, the enemy, Satan. The power of God, you must live a holy life because then you will live in the power and in the la love of the Holy Spirit, which is God's Spirit given to those who truly uh, will believe in Him. The book of 2 Timothy 1, 7, as we know already, for the spirit, spirit that God gives us does not make us timid, but gives us power and love and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed. Paul was reminding Timothy that as you think about these things, as you set yourself apart, you, know, you begin to live in the power, in the love and self-discipline of the Holy Ghost, which for, from, from time to time believers forget that they have access to God's Holy Spirit. And so the, the exhortation over there was to be careful and to walk uh, in that lifestyle, in the power and the love of the Holy Spirit. Holy living begin to walk in that uh, special grace. Three, holy living makes us too holy for evil and impure spirits from Satan to live or influence us. Holy living makes us too holy for evil and impure spirits. They always come from Satan, the headquarters, to live in you, to possess you as a human being. Because you are holy. And they are not holy, so they cannot. Light and darkness cannot coexist. Darkness must give way to light. And so holy living will help you. Let's see example, Luke uh, 8, uh, verse 1 to 3. A uh, woman, in particular, it mentioned Mary Magdalene and how he now dedicated herself to Christ because he had become a holy person, like a righteous woman. Luke 8, 1 to 3 says, After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him and also some women who had been killed of evil spirits. Some women, they had been killed of evil spirits and diseases. Mary Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out. Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the, the manager of Herod's household, and Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. They were tormented by evil, impure spirits. But when they met Christ, Christ delivered them. 
Now they have become righteous. So then they dedicated their lives to serve the loving God. So the holiness also calls us to commit our lives to something that is godly, that is holy. So we become too pure for evil spirits to live in us. So, so holiness is, is, is so holy living is just a great, great uh, calling. It should be a great way of living that uh, everyone should embrace. And as you listen to me this afternoon or later on, uh, make it your aim to just live holy unto the Lord. Uh, most of your problems, they will go because then the enemy will not have free access into your life. Holy living will make you too holy for evil spirit from impure spirits to come into your life. And then once you receive that grace, then you dedicate yourself, you set yourself apart. So Mary Magdalene and the women we mentioned, they were now following Christ. So that is important when you come to Christ and you are set free, follow Christ. Don't follow any other thing. Dedicate your life to Christ. If not, you may end up contaminating yourself uh, again. Uh, let's look at the benefit of holy living in the context of relationships and marriages. Uh, I think a few weeks ago we studied that holiness brings out the true beauty of relationships and marriages. Holiness, any relationship that is without holiness, it will be full of chaos, it will be full of conflict, it will be full of unfaithfulness and filth and all detestable practices. Sadly, as most of you are aware, the trend has been to build relationships and marriages on physical beauty, on money, on drugs, on sex, and fun, and prestige. And so then we lose the beauty of human relationships, of marriage. Uh, Hebrews 13, 4 says that the married bed is pure, so it must be kept holy. Right. So once you take holiness out of marriage, then it becomes useless. There will be abuse, there will be disrespect, there will be confusion. And you yourself, you will not admire your relationship, your marriage anymore. And so I think it's time we go back to God's way of life to restore His holiness in our relationship. Holy living is not difficult at all. It is the highway to heaven, holy life. And without being born again, no one can see the kingdom of God. And without holiness, no one will see God. Without being born again, we know from John chapter 3, verse 3 to 5, unless a man is born again, he shall never see, verse 5, nor enter the kingdom of God. And Hebrews 12, 14 says, unless you are born again, you are holy, you cannot see God. So both are necessary. You are born again, your sins are forgiven, you become a child of God. You belong to God's kingdom, you can see the kingdom, but to see the face of your father, you must live a holy life. And many Christians are born again, but they are not living a holy life, hence they cannot see God, the glory of God. Isaiah was a child of God through faith in, uh, in Abraham. But then he never saw the glory of God. We read in Isaiah 6 until the year that King Uzziah died. And then he was invited through visions and dreams to see the glory of God. And as we said, he was terrified at the beginning. And later on when his sins was taken away. After confessing that I'm a sinner and I live among the people of unclean lives. The Bible says that then he started uh, to be in conversation with the Lord. Without, without being born again, you cannot see nor enter the kingdom of God. Without holiness, no one will see God himself. So both are very important. Let's keep. So uh, these benefits and the fact that the holy living will help us to see God, I think should challenge all of us to live a very holy life. Also, you hurt yourself. You harm yourself. The demons, they don't have access into your, your, your life in the sense that you are holy and pure. We have many people going through quite a lot, a lot these days because of ungodliness. Let's look at how then to be holy, right? Okay, so looking at what holiness is, some benefits of holiness, how to be holy. First, righteousness, we've said, is cleansing from sin by the Lord Jesus Christ. Should come before holiness if possible. So to be 
to be uh, uh, holy, uh, don't just be following a set of rules, but just be born again first. Then it makes sense. Uh, people confuse the two. They will say that religion or Christianity is just a set of rules. It is not a set of rules. Uh, we follow certain principles because we are now in God's kingdom. It's the same thing like where you are working. There are certain basic guidelines, principles that you must follow because you are a worker or an employee there. Right? So your, your work or your, your workplace is not just a set of rules and principles. But you, you, you must follow those things so that you will be identified as an employee there. And the same thing when you are born again, because as we've been saying, you are now a, 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 a precious child of God. You cannot live anyhow at all. You must follow and avoid ungodliness. Now, Christians who want to uh, uh, do away with holy living or holy thought, they can go around and do some survey. They hurt themselves. They are always crying. They are always hurting, harming themselves. They are always dirty in their own eyes, although God still loves them. And they are always crying and they cannot experience the true peace of God. Now, if you are listening to me, that's this something I have been thinking that way, brother, sister, change your thinking. Because if not, you are born again, yet you are harming yourself. And many Christians today, that is our problem. We... I don't know where that thought came from, but I'm sure it's coming from the enemy. They want to do away with holiness, and yet they want to experience the Christian faith. You, you, once you are born again, you look into the Word of God and you avoid many, many other things. So, so, so let's keep that in mind. So first be born again, then think of, uh, how they call it, uh, 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 holy living. So for example, in chapter 6 we read Isaiah experience that chapter 8 verse 11 to 13 Look, now listen to what god told uh, uh, the prophet now the prophet had received his righteous status before the lord now god keeps talking to him listen to what god told uh, uh, uh isaiah isaiah 8 11 to 13 he said this is what the lord says to me with his strong hand upon me warning me not to follow the way of these people. 12. Do not call conspiracy everything these people call conspiracy. You cannot do that. Do not fear what they fear. Do not dread it. The Lord Almighty is the one you are to regard as holy. He is the one you are to fear. He is the one you are to dread. Hallelujah. So you cannot now just be like the people. Whatever what they call conspiracy, whatever uh, they are afraid of, you cannot because you are set apart person, right? So don't confuse the two. When people say that religion is just full of uh, rules and I, I don't do religion, I said you don't even know what you are talking about. Because in life, everything is full of rules. Even at your, at your, at your where, where you are living, you have basic rules, what to do and what not to do. And holy living will challenge us to look into life uh, this way to abstain from all that is so that's how we become holy we are born again and we set ourselves apart and not to do ungodly things uh, very very important being holy will qualify you to see god and being born again will qualify you to see and enter the kingdom of god and the second point is that now that you are born again and you have also separated yourself from unclean things things which will war against your soul first peter uh, 2 11 first peter 2 11 i mentioned this earlier one unless you do that as a believer you harm yourself you will harm yourself sometimes i see believers ditching the ways of god and then one i mean wanting to go their own way hoping it will work sometimes i cried in my spirit because i i know that it will never end well at all uh, for that man for that woman <clears throat> first peter 2 11 Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. To abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Live, set good lives among the pagans that the unbelievers, 
that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visit us 13 submit yourselves for the lord's sake i think we also need a sermon on submission to christ and how that also would do our way you know a lot of uh, uh, uh clean thing from our lives so living godly lives as in a pagan society that you must abstain from sinful desires some desires are not godly if you give in to them you reap uh some kind of hurt Okay, so those who are very uh, passionate and they follow desires, most of the time they are hurt emotionally. And so please uh, do not give in to carnality, but allow the Holy Ghost to lead you. So separate yourself from unclean. Holiness is both outward and inward. Holiness is both, is two. We talk about the dualistic attitude towards the holy. It's both outward and inward. So outwardly, your dressing, your association, friendship, what you say, okay, outwardly, even your dressing, what they think that has to do with you must be different. Exodus 19, the first time the Lord met his people, he said, all of you for three days consecrate yourself, wash your clothes and make sure that you abstain from anything and God because I'm your God, I am your God and I'm coming to you physically, okay, and then uh, uh, inwardly to you must be pure and holy that's what you think your desires your feelings your they must all be godly uh, I know people will say that the Lord looks you know at the heart yes but human beings cannot look at the heart and our lives are testimonies and I personally if you believe that you cannot dress anyhow to church if you cannot dress anyhow to what, then you cannot dress anyhow to church. If you cannot dress anyhow to see someone who is very important to you, then you cannot dress anyhow to see your God when you go to church. So outwardly, it's also very important. Uh, and inward uh, is also very, very important. Holiness must come from inside to the outside or vice versa. Once there is holiness inside of you, it will show out, outwardly. But when you cultivate the outward holiness with that, be pure in your thinking, in your heart, in your feelings, then the outward uh, holiness will be uh, hypocrisy, if you like, like the Pharisees of old. Holiness inside will produce holiness as at Mark 7, 17. Let's read what our Lord says here, Mark 7, 17 to 23. Mark 7, 17 to 23. Holiness must be both inward. And outward. Inward will give you the peace, and that is what, what God looks at. The outward will be that testimony to the observing world. Will be that testimony. Mark 70 17 says, After he had left the crowd he, he, and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. Are you so dull? He asked, Don't you see that anything that enters a person from the outside? Can defile him for for it doesn't go into their heart but goes into their stomach and then out of the body in, in saying this jesus declared all food clean 20 he went on what comes out of a person is what defiles them for it is from within out of a person's heart that evil thoughts come Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. So, so what you think, your feelings, your emotions, if they are not godly, that will also challenge your holiness. So we said that holiness must be must both outwardly and inwardly so outwardly that you make sure you are in the right group of people you don't go to places where they sell weed for example where they 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 they, they do bad things uh, your dressing must be decent don't tell me that you are holy in your heart so your dressing doesn't matter it, in fact it's a reflection of what is in your heart 
So if the heart is pure, if the thoughts are pure, if the feelings are genuine, it comes out as well. Let's keep that in mind. And in doing so, we will. I, I'm sure many people are tormented by uh, some thinking. You know, they've allowed impure spirit to torment their their mind because the impure spirits have found a place in your mind that they know that you will entertain unnecessary things. So they are dead. I pray that may the Lord this afternoon set you free from any negative thinking. Okay, let's look at the third uh, a means to be holy. Regard holy things as holy. If you want to be a holy person, regard holy things. I, I think in one of my books, I can't remember which of them, but I've talked about they need to treat holy things as, as, as holy and unholy things as unholy in life. They are holy things and they are unholy things, or the ones that are for common use. At, at, at this afternoon, during the house fellowship studies, we'll be discussing uh, some of the uh, ways we should respect holy things. Okay, I think that I think the title goes like this: respecting holy things. When you respect holy things, you become holy yourself. When you don't respect holy things because of the presence of God, it, it may harm you. That's how it works. So. In all the examples, instances we'll be looking at this after later on, you see that those who did not attain to holy things rightly, they were harmed. So we talk about uh, Meguza, and we talk about uh, Abirum, who offered unauthorized incense and was consumed by the fire of God, etc. So if you want to be a holy person, regard holy things as holy. It's as simple as so I put down some examples here. Human life is holy. Human life is holy. If you don't respect your life, you will destroy your life. But when you respect your own life as holy because God gave it to you, you will live well. Very simple as that. The life that you have, the air that you breathe that gives you life, is, is holy. It's holy. And you must see your life as holy. And as long as you see your life as holy, you will not do anything to destroy your life. Sadly, many who commit suicide, many, not, although not all of them, at some point, they don't regard them, their lives as holy, and so then they treat themselves anyhow. Your life is holy, hence, if you take your life or someone's life, because that life is holy unto the Lord, you will be accountable. When you touch anything that is holy in an unholy way, it harms you. When you respect a holy thing, it blesses you. That's the thing. <clears throat> so that's how God made the world. Some things are holy. Life is holy. Marriage is holy. Uh, Hebrews 13, 4, we said. And if you see your marriage as holy, becomes holy and nice and beautiful, you won't treat it anyhow. And that is what it will be for you. If you don't see your marriage or relationship as holy, you treat it anyhow. The bread and wine we take during the Holy Communion is holy. First Corinthians 11, what tells us that some were uh, partaking of that holy ordinance in an unworthy manner so some fell asleep some became weak some became sick because they did not give the right regard to the holy thing so so that's not holiness uh, uh, once you treat holy thing as holy <coughs> you will be blessed by the variety in that holy thing and if you disrespect a holy thing it has the the potential to also harm you. The word of God is holy. That's, we call it the holy scriptures. We call it the holy Bible. The word of the living God inspired by the spirit is holy. So those who approach the word of God with that sense of reverence, you realize that the word of God will minister to you so powerfully. Even as we are preaching, those who respect God's word, you realize that you receive more and more. And I meet uh, dozens of people a week. And sometimes those who come, once you see their countenance and how they respect the conversation and the holiness and the word of God, you know, they live blessed. And sometimes you look at those who are very careless, you know that they live and sometimes you know that there has not been any impartation at all. The word of God is holy. The temple of God is holy. The temple of God in two sense, your body is the temple of the living God is holy. And so God wants to live in you. First Corinthians 6 says that your temple, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. 
And so once you become born again, you are a holy person. And God wants to live in that temple or the physical temple we go or the church building, that environment we go to worship. It's a holy place because the gathering uh, is designed to meet the holy God. And we said that the moment something is dedicated to God, that thing becomes uh, holy unto the Lord. And we can also say that the name of the Lord is holy unto us. 27 says that do not misuse the name of the Lord because it is holy. Then the sense that don't just say it anyhow. So, for example, if you use the name of Christ in the name of Jesus, I'm healed, right? So that name can bring healing to your life. And if you don't respect the name, then you won't receive the power in that name. So you must respect the name of God. That is why we don't really have the name, the true name of God in the Old Testament. Uh, the priests were very careful. So they will use the word maybe Lord, God Almighty, but his true name, the Yahweh, the Jehovah, uh, it's always resolved. So that once you mention the name of God, people will give that respect to the name. So that they will be so blessed. The name of the Lord is holy. It may surprise some of you to uh, know that a, a, a tithe of everything from your your produce, the land, the grain, every, the soil, or the fruit from the trees belongs to the Lord. It is holy. Uh, Leviticus 27.30 says, A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. Thing of everything belongs to God. In the, in the Old Testament, your firstborn is holy to the Lord. And if you don't want to give him unto the Lord exclusively for his service, then you must redeem him. You know, there's that instruction. And so, so, so there are holy things in life. And if you treat them as holy, you will receive the blessing. But if you don't treat them as holy, you will. So, so for example, the tithe, you don't have to eat your tithe. It belongs to God. If you eat your tithe, it means they have treated it as an unholy thing to the Lord. So there are a lot of things. I've mentioned a few here. If you want to be holy, always. Uh, in fact, some people will say that when they go to other places, maybe some of the Arab nations, they really love them because everything there is pure and, and holy sort of. You cannot do things anyhow. I think even in the British, you are careful not to dress anyhow going in there. And so, and so again, I'm not saying that that is a holy place, although it may be, but that that sense of holiness makes life beautiful. And so treat holy things as holy. And then there are things that are not holy, so then you treat them accordingly. And the third, and I'm sure the, the last one is avoid being contaminated by the world. Pride of life, the disaster of the flesh, and what one has first, John 2, 15, you can be contaminated by the world, the pride of life, arrogance, and also being boastful that can contaminate your soul. I was listening to a very short documentary by a Catholic nun, a Catholic nun and then before her speech, she said that. Uh, we are called to be holy and therefore I cannot even talk about myself. Hmm. He said, I cannot talk about myself because we are called to, sorry, we are called to be humble. Therefore, I cannot talk about myself. I should only talk about the Lord and the poor people. Hmm. Uh, but that ministered to me and still with me that I cannot talk about myself. but to talk about the Lord. I cannot put myself forward. I cannot at all, but let me talk about the Lord. So first John two fifteen, do not love the world, anything in the world. As you love the world, you pollute yourself. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And we talk about the world, we're talking about the systems of the world, the, the philosophies, the ideologies that are in contrast to the will of God. You don't love them, so make sure whatever thing that is God is, is what you love. So, uh, no, uh, anything that is worldly means is, 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 is ungodly, right? So Christ said that don't love them. If you do, you contaminate yourself. Uh, verse 16, for everything in the world, mentions three here, the lust of the eye, 
So the word now, tempting now on YouTube, Facebook, uh, sometimes you are not, you are, you are not even interested to see things, but they will come. Guess what? The last of the eye. It says here. So the last of the flesh, the last of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father from the world. Okay, so then these things, the last of the flesh can contaminate, the last of the eyes, and the pride of life, being boastful and arrogant and priding yourself of achievement. And what the colleague now said uh, it will stay with me for a long time, that I've been called to be humble, therefore I cannot even talk about myself. Don't allow the things of the world. I think it's becoming very difficult for Christians to know that which is of the world and that which is of the kingdom. Because they have lost the concept of holiness at all. I mean the last way is that Jesus is the only Lord, Messiah, who can. And because of our sins, reconcile us to the Holy God. So let Christ Jesus be your Lord and Savior. He's the only one who can truly make you holy. He gives you righteousness and he calls you to be a holy saint. He gives you righteousness and he calls you to be a holy saint. So Christ is our Lord and Savior. He saves us from sins and he's the one who must rule. He's the one who must lord himself over us. And if Christ is not your Lord, if he's not the one you listen to, if he's not the one you submit to, as we we look into this great subject, I want to challenge you, make Jesus your Lord. He's the only God you call upon. No idol, no shrine, no voodoo, nothing. He should be your Lord. And in doing so, you can expose yourself to the heavens. And God will bless you and be with you. In, in conclusion, I want to mention that there are levels of holiness. Uh, people are, can be really, really holy and pious. Others two are yet to get there. And what I'm coming to say will help us to be considerate and, and not to expect everyone to be at the same level of holiness as us. Very important. Uh, some people have disciplined themselves and they are very, very holy in the sense that they have set themselves quite apart from a lot of things. Others two are yet to catch up. And what we are coming to read will encourage us not to discriminate or look down upon people because they are not like us. And I think I've said severally that, for example, when someone comes to the church, the first time, you know, their behavior, their dressing will be a bit, you know, uh, questionable. But with time, you know, things will get better. Okay, but those of you who have been there for years, you just know. And so, and so be considerate here. Uh, so that you don't just uh, begin to talk about your own uh, holiness as the gospel. So you allow the gospel to speak, not uh, your own personal holiness. Uh, Romans 14, 1 to 4. We're talking about levels of holiness here. And I think this will be our last point as we focus on the holiness of God as a way of life. Romans 14, 1 says, Accept the one whose faith is weak. Without acquiring over disputable matters. So there are people that have weak faith. At least they have faith, but it's weak. And Christ said that if your faith is as small as a master seed, you can't even say it. So, 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 so that weak faith uh, will, 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 will lead them to heaven. At least they have, they have faith. But it's weak. And so, and so accept that person. Don't look down from them. Two. One person's faith allows them to eat anything but another whose faith is weak is only vegetables the one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not and the one who, who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does not for god has accepted them very important so just just two examples so some will eat meat others with only vegetables that's fine that's fine that is how far your faith can be stretched, if you like. But there shouldn't be any contention here. So we have levels. Some people are very, but some people will stay away from uh, quite a lot of things. Some people too, they have the strong faith to even eat, eat, eat the teeth of a crocodile. 
Some people have very strong faith. They will eat even the tank, the, the tank of a lion. They have strong faith. But some too will not even touch the skin of a crocodile. They are afraid. Some even are afraid to see a live chicken being slaughtered. They will run away and say, that is a crime. That is why. That is how they are how far their faith can be strength. Verse 4 says, Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To their own master, to their own master, servants stand or fall. And they will stand, for the Lord is able to make them stand. So we have weak faith and strong faith. But the challenge is how to considerate, accommodate, and live in harmony, respect, encouraging every brother, every sister unto holiness. Because as we know, our faith is a journey. And some people have really advanced. And I pray that you continue to advance and advance until you enter heaven. Verse 16 says, One person considers one day more sacred than, than another. Another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Whoever regards one day as special, that so to the Lord. Whoever eats meat, that so to the Lord. For they give thanks to God, and whoever abstains does so to the Lord, and gives thanks to, to God. For none of us lives for ourselves alone, and none of us die. None of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. Whether we live or die, we belong to God. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life, so that he might be the Lord of both the dead. Uh, and the living. So uh, this is very, very important. Uh, I think text that should encourage us to treat people with respect and love if they are not at the level of our faith because they will also get there one day. But even if they don't get there, once they have faith in the Lord, God, Christ, who have saved them, he knows how to deal with them. And this will encourage us to live in peace and not to fight and not to argue over disputable matters as the bible says so uh our sermon has been very very simple this afternoon the holiness of god and out of this he calls his people to be holy and you and i we are holy because we are in christ jesus sorry we are righteous because we are in christ jesus and therefore the calling is to set ourselves apart from ungodly things and to dedicate ourselves to godly things that is the life of holiness we talk about. And we said as we do that, uh, we will save ourselves from the many harmful desires, the lifestyle choices robbing us of peace, quality of life as human beings. As we live a holy life, the evil spirit and impure spirit will not have no place in our lives to dwell. But rather our lives and our bodies becomes a temple of the living God. So the sovereign Lord comes in to live with us. And this is beautiful. And there are other many benefits. So let's continue to look to the Lord. And let's all strive to be holy. For without holiness, no one can see God. It's exactly one o'clock. Let me say hello to a few people. And then we can break. And then we will have uh, our communion and have our Bibles. So if you are online, I want to just say hello. As a way of fellowship. Uh, uh, we fellowship. Uh, because of the pandemic, we fellowship uh, via Facebook, and normally we say hello to one another, uh, like a special greeting. So uh, let me see those online, and let me say hello. If you are online, just say hello, and I'll also respond. Those online, I can see. So I, I'm reading from <coughs> uh, where I can see, uh, from... Uh, Nina from Poma, yes, uh, we bless you in the name of the Lord this afternoon. We also bless Sharon Smith in the name of the Lord. I can see your name here. Oh, yes, uh, Rias. Yes, uh, Pastor Rias from Pakistan. Yes, we bless you, Pastor Rias from Pakistan. Greetings to everyone, your wife, your people. Then we also bless Dokas. We saying hello, amen. I think she's using my uh, device. So, Dokat, we bless you in the name of the Lord. Then, Saman, we bless you in the name of the Lord. And then we have Felicia Boche, saying Amen. 
to the family of God. God bless you, Felicia. And we have Bess, Kenwa, and Louisa. God bless all of you as you listen. And then we have Regina Kwako. God bless you so much. We have Kwesi Henry. Amen. And we also say Amen. God bless you. Then we have Hello from Susanna. Okay, so, uh, so the thinking girls are also saying hello. So, hello from Susanna. Susanna, we bless you in the name of the Lord. Then we have uh, Kwabina Emisa. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, God bless you, Brother Emisa. Then we have uh, Melissa NB. God bless you, Bishop. God bless you, Melissa. We have J. Bright. God bless you and all the Tibri people. Uh, Johnny Johnson. And Stacy, we bless you. God bless you guys. Yasmin in Japan, and Jesse and everyone, your mom and everyone in your house. But the Lord bless you so much. And Ray, brother Ray, adopted junior. God bless you. Greetings to Amma and the boys. I'll see them soon. Then greetings to also and God's blessings upon Adjuasa. Say that Lord bless you. Blessings to Lorraine. From East Town, God bless you, Lorraine, and your husband and everyone. Uh, Julia Rogers from Stratford, God bless you, Mrs. Rogers uh, and your husband, and the kids and everyone. We have Winifred Barton also from uh, East Town, where I live. Uh, God bless you, uh, Winifred. And we have Edward, God bless you so much, and some aunt coming up again. So, so yes, just to... Uh, a, a, a fellowship just for a minute so if your name uh, is not mentioned yeah you can you just have a minute to go and that today is uh, communion Sunday so those of you who have received your your bread and wine you can go ahead I'm sure some of you were not able to come for the bread and wine and so I'm sure by next month uh, things will be well settled and so yeah we, we leave you with the peace the blessings of God May the Lord bless you in all that you do. His favor rests upon you so powerfully. And as we've been looking at, continue to live a holy life. Continue to set yourself apart. You live a very quality life. And God who has called you is holy. Therefore, you must be holy. Don't be terrified when we talk about the holiness of God. But rather go so that Christ will make you righteous. And so that any time we talk about the holiness of God, that will fascinate you. You become so happy. And you can begin to talk to God. For without holiness, you cannot see God. And without being born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So we end our sermon this way. And we say that the blessings of the Lord be upon you. In Jesus' name, Amen.